There are about a million reasons why you might want to pass actor data into a PCG graph. In the case of this project, I wanted the construction zones to be easy to visualize and modify, so I built a system where tagged cubes control the boundary. An actor blueprint gathers location and scale data from the cubes and passes these arrays into its PCG component. Creating a data pipeline like this requires a little bit of setup, but it's not difficult once you understand the moving parts. So let's jump in. Starting off here in a new basic level, go to Edit, Plugins, type PCG in the search field, make sure you've got the uh, procedural content generation framework plugin enabled. Now right click down here in the content browser, select Blueprint, Actor, call that one BP PCG Array. Let's go ahead and create a PCG graph. Let's go to the modeling menu. We'll create a sphere. I'm going to set this to save itself in the current folder here. Let's go ahead and save the stuff and open up the blueprint. Let's add a PCG component. And then over here, I just need to drag my PCG array into the graph section, compile and save. Turn the visibility off on the floor. So I've got this instance here. I'm just gonna make a few more and we'll just sort of scoot them around a little bit. And then I'm going to select all of them, come over here to tag in the actor tag section. I'm just going to write PCG tag. So all these actors don't have this tag. Set back into the blueprint, go to the construction script. I'm going to right click and type in get all actors of class with tag. We want the static mesh actor class and our tag is going to be PCG tag. So this is going to automatically locate all these actors and add them here to this array. Let's go ahead and add a variable. Call this one locations. I'm going to set it to a vector data type, make it public, compile and save. We'll pull off from the array here and type in for each. Well, let's go ahead and get the actor location. That'll be a vector. Oh, I need to actually set this to be an array. Make this a little bit bigger so we're not so cramped. So I've created the variable over here. I'm gonna tell it to be an array. We'll do a get on that, pull off, type in the word add. So we're just getting all of the locations of any actor with this particular tag, PCG tag, that happens to be static mesh as well. We will do a compile and save. Let's grab the blueprint, drag it into the world. And uh, what we can see right away is there are a lot more than four entries here. And the reason is I forgot something very important, which is I need to clear this array. Every time we run the construction script, so every time the blueprint moves or there's any change to its data, it's going to run the script. So we will compile and save and hopefully see we're down to four. Perfect. Okay. Let's open up the PCG array here. I need to get the actor property called locations. This will give us access to that array. On the parent blueprint, you can see we no longer have that error. If I hit A on this to inspect it and then come down here, what you'll see is there are our four locations with X, Y, and Z data, as well as an index. So what I need to do is operate on each one of these independently. To do that, I need to add an attribute partition. And if I inspect that, now we're down to one piece of data, but I can access each one individually. 
So once you've got this data partitioned out, you have to add an additional PCG graph that is a loop. So let's go ahead and create that. I'm just gonna call this one PCG array loop. Save it and open it up. Well, let's select the input, open the pin section. I'm gonna rename the label to locations. For the allowed types, we want to set this to attribute set, which is the kind of data that we get from a uh, parent blueprint. And then for the pin status, just set it to normal. And then for the output, we're going to be outputting is going to be points. And we'll set this to normal as well. So back here in our main PCG array graph, let's go ahead and drag our loop in. And you wanna select it as a loop node, not a subgraph node. You can see here, we've got our locations in and our points coming out. So I'm just gonna plug this in like that. So now I've got our locations data. Let's open the loop back up. I want to create a points grid. And for each point that we're getting out of our points grid, I want to offset them so that they all have this location data built into them, right? So we can go ahead and inspect this now by tapping the A key, open this up a bit. So there's all of our location data, right? So for the points out of here, I'm going to pull off here and type in an add node. Let me scoot that over a little bit. In fact, we can make this all a little bit bigger. So for the input source, I want to set this to location, sorry, position when we're dealing with points. So we're just adding this data to the position of each point. The points already have uh, X, Y, Z attributes. And then we can just plug that in directly. So if I turn on debug for this, well, we can see that the points grid is pretty big. So let's head back in here and modify that. We'll just set this to 50 by 50. And there you go. Now the pivot on the sphere probably can be adjusted. It's at the bottom. So the points grid is spawning kind of at the bottom of the sphere. So let's adjust that. We'll just go to transform, edit pivot, and then center. And now we need to just kind of touch the blueprint so that it can recalculate and figure out where those points now live relative to their pivots. So let's hop over to wireframe for just a second. You can see that the points are the exact same size as our spheres. And the reason for that is the spheres by default come in at a diameter of 100 units or a radius of 50 units. So if you look over here, we've got a grid extent set to 50 in X, Y, and Z, and the cell size is set to 100. So the extents is basically the distance from the center of the grid to the edge, right? So we're basically saying this thing is allowed to be 100 units across, and then we're saying our cell size is 100 units. So what that's going to mean is we end up with effectively one point per pass through here, right? So we're going to come over here and set this to something like 50. You can see now we're getting some subdivisions here in the wireframe, and we now have eight points. So hopefully that makes sense for how these values are modifying the actual size of the points that we're creating based on the location of our spheres. I'm actually going to add a few more points here just to make this easy to see what's going on. Uh, I'm going to hop over to a uh, lit mode again. And what I want to do is I want to pass the scale data from our spheres into our points grid. To do that, we're going to need to head back over to our blueprint. I'm going to add another variable here. We'll call this one scales and it can be a vector array as well. We'll go ahead and grab a reference. First thing I want to do is clear it. Scoot this stuff down a little bit. And we'll get another reference over here. Pull off, type the word add. This is our actor reference. We'll use get actor scale 3D. And I can just plug it in like this. Let's go ahead and compile and save. Oh, we got to make sure this is public. 
And then let's make one of these spheres a little bit bigger. Just say three across. Let's open our array loop back up. We can do a get actor property right here. We'll set the property that we're looking for to scales. And when you are in a loop, you have access to a node called get loop index. And then we want to pull off of here and use get attribute set by index or from index. So if we inspect this, you can see we're going to have our scales. Oh, it looks like I need to update this a little bit. I just moved it, so now we've got that updated data there. So if we take a quick look at the Great Points Grid node, we can see our extents are 50 by 50 by 50. And what I've got down here is threes and ones. So what I need to do is pull off of here, type in the word multiply, and then we're going to create an attribute Plug the attribute in there. And this is just a, a number, a double, so we can just set this to 50. So if I inspect this, now we should have 50, 50, 50, and the point that came in with the 3x scale is at 150, and then the rest of them are all 50s. So I can now extend this. We've got our grid extents option. I'm just gonna scoot some of this stuff around. We'll pipe this into grid extents. We'll go ahead and save it. And if we look at it here in the world, now we can see our points grid is now taking on the scale of the actor. So if we go to wireframe, you see it lines up perfectly. A little bit easier to see on the top view, right? So if I just grab another one here, and it doesn't have to be a uniform scale. If I scale it in one axis and update the blueprint, you'll see that the scale adjusts accordingly. So if we head over to our primary PCG array graph and add a bounds modifier and set the bounds min and max to 0.2 and turn on debug, you'll see we now have lots and lots of points based on our actor scale that we can do whatever we want with. So this is a pretty simple technique for piping in whatever you want, really, uh, whatever kind of array data you're interested in feeding into your PC graph, you can collect it and organize it via a blueprint. And uh, yeah, the, the rest is pretty straightforward. You just have to set up a, a loop to process it and you should be good to go. Please feel free to leave any questions in the comment section and thank you very much.